20 years ago, the town of New Sweden made national headlines. 16 parishioners at the Gustav Adolf Lutheran Church became sick after drinking coffee tainted with arsenic. One of the victims was 78-year-old Walter Morrill. He ended up dead. He was the, it was the largest arsenic poisoning in modern history. State police finished their investigation three years later. They ruled that church member Daniel Bonnison poisoned his fellow parishioners and acted alone. Bonnison committed suicide shortly after the poisonings. He apparently told his attorney that he was retaliating against church members because he thought somebody had put chemicals in his coffee. Here's a story that John Small put together on the one year anniversary of that event. Uh, we're still finding um, things to follow up on uh, as we reviewed our past year's uh, work and performance, uh, maybe putting, wrapping up loose ends. Lieutenant Dennis Appleton says at least one investigator is working on this case every day. But so far, the only person they've linked to the crime is Daniel Bondison, who committed suicide at his farm just days after the poisonings. Police say a note he left behind led them to believe he didn't act alone. Uh, we still hold firm to our belief that uh, there is at least one other person, if not more, that are culpable in this crime. Things are pretty quiet here at the Bondison farm a year later. All of the folks we spoke with in town who knew Danny Bondison had nothing but kind words about the man. They're just trying to understand what happened in the final days of his life. He must have been going through sheer hell. The remorse that he felt. How could we possibly judge a person who had done good their whole life through for 53 years and then in the last five days did something stupid? Brenda Jepsen has written a book about the New Sweden tragedy. She believes what happened at this church wasn't supposed to turn out the way it did. I absolutely know that it was never intended that anyone should die as a result of that poisoning. The Bondesen family has kept to themselves. Danny's sister Norma lives at the farm and never speaks to reporters. Danny's brother Paul is out of state. We couldn't get in touch with him. Investigators hope on this one year anniversary someone's conscience will get to them and they'll start talking. Someone who has knowledge coming forward uh, and, and filling in some of the missing points would help. I was in intensive care for 14 days. In the first two weeks, I didn't know what was going on. 80-year-old Ralph Oslin was the oldest of the poisoning victims. He spent a month in the hospital and some time with his daughter before coming home. I was doing pretty well for a while. And all of a sudden, it took, it got worse again. I got a numbness in my feet, and that's probably why I was stay there. Ralph started using a cane, but the turning point came during the winter. Around Christmas time, two of my grandchildren come up, and I said, this is the time for me to try skiing. So I took them with We only went about two miles that day, but I was out there. Ralph is active again and has become an inspiration to the community. Another of the victims, Eric Margison, has a lot to be thankful for. He and his wife, Elena, just had triplets, a celebration of sorts for the community and a chance to put the poisonings behind him. In September or October, when we found out we were pregnant, it was real easy for me to, in a sense, close that chapter and open a new one. And it's not that I don't think about it, but I definitely don't dwell on it. The smallest of the triplets, the Margisons call him their little fighter, is named Reed after Reed Morrill, the only person who died after drinking the tainted coffee. Reed Morrill had just had his, his bypass last year and, you know, he was recovering from that and and we just just wanted that to be remembered. There are a lot of mixed emotions in this small town. Some folks say they want to forget what happened at this church a year ago. Others say only answers to lingering questions will bring closure. It, it would be good to have an answer, but if you really, it, it won't make sense. I, I'd like to see the case go, all right. I knew this happened to me, and uh, there's uh, nothing I can do, and uh, life goes on. During the year, I think some of us were trying very hard to put it behind us. But when it's an unsolved mystery, it does nag at the back of a person's mind.